Welcome. So now we're going to record. I'm going to share. And we're going to go over chapter five. Ethnic Solidarity, the Settling of Japanese America. All righty. So Strangers from the Dimmer Shore by Ronald Takaki, Chapter 5, Ethnic Solidarity, The Settling of Japanese America. So these are books I recommend. Uh, the George Takai, uh, they called us enemy at 442, uh, the most decorated of its size. Uh, Japanese American, uh, American uh, uh, kind of military troop uh, that, again, their family was incarcerated, uh, but they fought for America with dignity, and many of them died. America Sutra uh, by Duncan uh, Williams, very crucially important as well. Chapter five, Ethnic Solidarity and the Settling of Japanese America. And let me take myself out. So, is there a way you can... Ah, there it is, okay. Uh, Japanese Americans were discriminated against in Hawaii, but Asians still were the majority, um, as we discussed in our last class. The mainland, there was lots of hostility towards Japanese America, but much worse in mainland because, remember, Japanese Americans were the minority, but Japanese, even though they um, were discriminated against and treated poorly in Hawaii, where they were spit upon, etc., cetera, um, they actually still were with the majority of other Asians. And so that was a big difference. And, and yes, Japanese were spit on in the mainland. So I would like you to definitely watch the film, What Led to the Decline of Japanese American Farmers in California, AG. Um, that's a really great, um, a tiny little documentary that you would look at. Um, all right, so Japanese settlements. They Primarily Japanese Americans have settled in Hawaii, LA, Seattle, and San Francisco. Japanese experiment, uh, experienced parentalism in Hawaii, which means like someone like being a parent to you, but you know, treating you in a dog term manner, but kind of disregarded in the mainland. Um, how do, what did the Japanese do to pass time? What was the intense ethnic enterprise of the Japanese? And of course, you can pause right now and answer that. They, um, of course, farmed primarily to pass the time. Now, 1907 was a gentleman's agreement, um, which actually banned further Japanese Im immigration to the United States. Um, and again, uh, this is a very, a very huge anti-Asian sentiment time, a result of a strike, universal recognition of all workers, minority and part of ranks. Um, this brought together a lot of workers. So a lot of like the striking, um, were actually by union workers and they striked against Japanese and they said that they were taking away their jobs and President Roosevelt wanted to preserve, quote, America. So he did deport some Japanese as well. So the Japanese were here. They're primarily in the Central Valley. Some of them went to Hawaii and then re immigrated again to Central Valley. So they thought they'd be treated better. Um, actually, sadly, they were treated worse in some instances um, later on interned. So the Japanese, um, two types of jobs were field work and household work. So Japanese who used to, four methods to obtain land to farm, right? They're primarily farm workers. They did contracting, sharing, leasing, and ownership, very much co-ethnic groups together. Japanese laborers had little to do but to gamble, right? Um, if previously we talked about how there was redlining um, among ethnic groups and they were not allowed certain places. Um, there's a lot of racial discrimination against Japanese. They were striking for their wages to increase, but unfortunately, um, you know, there was lots of anti-Japanese sentiments. If you look at the picture, it says, Japs, keep moving. This is a white man's neighborhood. So again, very much mistreated in the Central Valley in particular. That's where a lot of them settled. Um, and of course, um, Riverside and Bakersfield um, and also Orange County, that's where they settled. So there's a lot of a cultural duality for Japanese Americans because um, they're, um, in one case, they're Japanese, but you know, they're Americanized. They lived here their entire life. And so there's like some cultural um, duality they experience, right? Um, so in one case, you know, they kind of like read the North American Times, but they also read the Japanese American community newspaper in Seattle. Um, they had discrimination wherever they went, at work and at school. Nisei, which is second generation, Issei is first, 
Issei second, Sansei third. We're told to go back to Japan to find work, although, you know, a lot of them were born and are here and raised here are primarily since childhood. So, you know, this is all they know. And they had to prove themselves by working really hard. So a lot of times um, what they did is they anglicized their names. They, they changed Monica Son to, uh, which is the anglicized name of Kazuki Monica. Okay. Um, there's a lot, they had a lot to do a lot to survive, right? Because the, the hostile treatment they experienced was unholy, okay? So basically in agriculture, they used a Japanese ethnic farming knowledge, which of course improved our, lots of our farming and has our, you know, now we have eat delicious vegetables, right? And fruits because of the Japanese knowledge of farming. Also, they had kind of co-ethnic solidarity, second generation, the goal was to become citizens, right? Because, you know, they're Americans, they feel American and that's all they know. This is their new home and that's their home. They adopted strategies to avoid ethnic antagonism, right? They didn't want to like uh, fight with other groups. Unfortunately, just like the Chinese and just like the Filipinos and the Koreans, um, there's lots of legislators that was really racist against them. And one was the 1913 alien land law. So non-citizens cannot own property. Obviously, this is aimed towards Japanese and Chinese, right? So basically, a survival strategy, what the Japanese did is they listed their properties under their their children's names, where the children actually were born here, they're American citizens. Um, and so again, that was um, a, a strategy they, they did to survive. Unfortunately, there was a Pearl Harbor attack and that led to World War II. And immediately this led to internment for Japanese Americans. Um, they led to, or Jap and Japanese citizens in America. They led to Roosevelt interning all the Japanese in the mainland um, and that not the majority in, in uh, Hawaii because they're too numerous, okay. He also interned some Italians, some Germans. So this is what you, they saw. They saw this big um, um, kind of poster board. It says instructions to all persons of Japanese ancestry living in the follow areas. And, and, and again, San Francisco, they, they call them assembly centers, right? There was assembly center there, it's Van Ness. Um, if it was in Fresno, it was the, the fairgrounds. If it was in uh, LA, Santa Anita Park. Um, so they call them these things where they basically told these Japanese, you have a few days, pick up or sell off everything you have, um, take just very little with you. And then they had to like live in horse stalls. So then FDR signs executive order 9066. Um, again, this is a, you know, very much a huge injustice that happened. There was no evidence that the Japanese government had any success in, in recruiting any Japanese in the United States. And I cannot emphasize enough, there's a 1941 Munson report that said that Japanese were not loyal or, uh, or dis, uh, not spies and not disloyal, at least they were passive, right? So again, the uh, report that our own president Roosevelt at the time looked at, which is a kind of seeing if they were um, loyal, came up that they're not disloyal. Okay, they're actually loyal to the United States. So unfortunately, they had to go to internment camps, and Manzamar was one of them. A very, um, I recommend everyone try to take a look and see what happened, and especially in California, you can probably take a look. These are great films uh, and books that you can uh, watch. Um, Come See the Paradise is a great film about the internment. Uh, Dennis Quaid's in there. American Sutra, excellent. Um, very moving, uh, uh, reconstructing what happened to the Japanese. And unfortunately, these Japanese American assembly centers are, are um, sometimes they don't really show like what happened in these areas, right? It's like a, sm like a small plaque, but if people who go there, thousands of people every year don't realize like what happened to these people. So the, here you have the Fresno Fairgrounds where they had a, um, a locate in the Sandy Near Racetrack. It's like a tiny placard. Okay, so please take a look at these areas and and take a look at where the horses are living because that's where the Japanese were forced to live before they were shipped off into internment camps. So President Ronald Reagan signs the Civil Liberties Act and in 1988 on October um, 10th, 1988, it granted reparations for the internment of Japanese Americans. And this is huge, especially if you're into reparations. This is a wonderful thing where the United States recognizes what they did to the Japanese was a total injustice. 
food for thought. Maybe we should have reparations for other groups, such as Native Americans or African Americans, who um, definitely have been mistreated as well. So also, you know, all around, we have lots of Japanese American remnants and still there are Japanese Americans who are fourth generation. Um, they tend to be mixed, actually. Uh, so a huge portion of Japanese people who uh, came out in the tournament actually married non-Japanese. And so you see a lot of Japanese who are mixed. So near us, there's Mansuto Farms in Fresno, California, and you can buy some peaches there. Lovely book about uh, farm life and by David Amasuto, which is awesome. Uh, Four Seasons on My Family Farm, just wonderful book, you know, and talking about what happened in the tournament, the injustice, and you know how his family just keeps going. So I really, uh, really, really very much encourage everyone to visit the National Japanese American Museum. Um, when I worked at Cal Poly Pomona, I, I took my students there um, every year for 14 years and I really miss it. It's a wonderful museum. It talks about Japanese American history and art and just a uh, just wonderful museum. So please drop by. They have an online presence as well. And food for thought, Japanese Americans were put in literal internment camps and incarcerated. Now, does that remind you of any policy that's happening now? Hmm, interesting, something to think about. How can the historical injustice of Asian Americans now be a blueprint for how they treat others in terms of the United States and like why they, how they've treated others, okay? So that is the end and I would love to discuss with more in class. Have a wonderful day.